So let's finish our problem working solving session of chapter 7. And in this problem solving session, we're going to be talking about Carnot heat engines. We're going to be talking about Carnot refrigeration cycles, and we're going to be talking about Carnot heat pumps. I'm going to work three problems, one of each. In this particular problem, we have a Carnot heat engine. Uh, the thermal efficiency of this heat engine is 40%. The high temperature, the hot temperature is 1200 degrees Celsius. We don't know what QH is, which is what we'd like to find. Our heat engine converts this QH to 500 kilojoules of usable work, and we reject QL uh, to our cold source at a temperature TL, which we don't know either of those properties. So in order to find QH, TL, and Q QL, we're going to just use some of the definitions in our text. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the definition of thermal efficiency for a Carnot heat engine, which is 1, over, one minus TL over TH. Okay. The thermal efficiency is given as 0 0.4. The low temperature, we don't know. And the high temperature, we do know. It's 1200. Now be very careful when we deal with Carnot heat engines. Remember, we have to use the thermodynamic temperature scale, which is, in this case, degrees or just Kelvin. Not degrees Kelvin, just Kelvin. So the low temperature source we will calculate to be at a temperature of 883 Kelvin. And that's just using our definition of thermal efficiency for a Carnot heat engine. That's where we're starting. Okay? Next thing we can do is we can use our uh, definition of thermal efficiency again. And these are all equivalent forms of thermal efficiency. Our definition of this thermal efficiency is the work output divided by QH. And these are all equivalent to each other just written in different ways. So our uh, heat work output of our system, remember, is 500 kilojoules. Our thermal efficiency is 0.4. And our heat transfer uh, from our hot source to our heat engine, we can solve for that now pretty easily. And that's 1250 kilojoules. All right. Um, the last thing we want to find is uh, the heat that is lost to the uh, sink. And for that, we'll you again use our definition of thermal efficiency for a Carnot heat engine. And remember, the uh, heat transfer rates and temperatures are um, proven to be, um, the ratio of these is proven to be equivalent for this type of system, okay? So this would be one minus uh, QL, which we have that given, or I'm sorry, uh, let's see, QL, we don't know what QL is actually, that's what we're trying to find, and QH is given as something we just solved, 1250 kilojoules, and our thermal efficiency of course is the same, which is 0.4, and we can solve for QL here which uh, ends up being 700, oops, 750 kilojoules. Okay. So the next thing I'd like to do, the next type of problem I'd like to solve is a Carnot heat pump problem. So our Carnot heat pump here um, is extracting hot or uh, heat from a cold source. We input work to the heat pump, and it adds heat to wherever we are. So if we're trying to heat our house, we would be, and the outside temperature is, has some, there's some outside temperature here, uh, which is what we don't know what it is. Um, we would be heating our house by extracting the heat from that already cold temperature. Now the coefficient of performance for this heat pump is 8.7 and our goal here is to find the 
low temperature source and the amount of heat that's transferred to the high, hot temperature source here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, just like we've done for the previous problems, is we're going to define our coefficient of performance for our heat pump and that's going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 minus TL over TH. So that's our definition of our co coefficient of performance. So it's similar to our e efficiency um, calculation earlier for the equivalent heat engine. So for this heat pump we have a coefficient of performance which is 8.7 this is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus, and again, when we talk about Carnot uh, cycles, we have to use the absolute temperature scales. So this would be TL divided by 273 plus 26, which is the temperature of our hotter, temp hotter uh, heat source. Solving for TL in this equation, and I'll, I'll again save the algebra, leave the algebra out to save time, we can see that this comes out to be 264.6 Kelvin. That's the temperature of our heat sink. Um, so how do we determine the uh, QH for this system. So QH is going to be equal to the coefficient of performance for our heat pump. By definition, this is the ratio of the high temperature heat transfer rate divided by the work in. So our coefficient of performance here is 8.7 QH. That's what we're trying to solve for. And we know that we put in 4.25 kilowatts of work into this system. So here we know that QH would be equal to 36.98 kilowatts if you solve for QH in that above equation. So you can see a lot of these Carnot cycles, heat pumps, uh, heat engines, refrigeration cycles are all basically variations of each other and the solving methodology for these is all very similar. Okay. Um, I'm going to finish up chapter 7 here with a Carnot refrigeration cycle. So here we have a refrigerator. Uh, the cold refrigerated part is at minus 8 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's, it's rejecting heat or, or absorbing heat from that cold source at 300 kilojoules per minute and it's rejecting the heat to the hot temperature source which is at 25 degrees Celsius. So how do we go about solving this? Again we're going to just use the relationships that we have and knowing some of the values that we have we'll see how far we can get here. So our coefficient of performance is 1 divided by, this is just by definition, TH over TL minus 1. Um, we have also the values of TH and TL. So that's why I selected this equation because we had those values. So this is 25 plus 273 divided by minus 8 plus 273 minus 1. So our coefficient of performance for this refrigeration cycle is 8.03. Um, what we really want to find though in this problem is let's find what let's find out what the <coughs> work input to the system is. So what is that? So in order to get work input, all we're going to do, once again, is use our definition of the coefficient of performance. So this is analogous to the efficiency in a heat engine. And we'll take the ratio of the QL over W, or work in, 
We solved already for the coefficient of performance, which was 8.03. QL is given as 300 kilojoules per minute. And work in is what we're trying to solve for. So work in here is if when we solve it, 6.623 kilowatts. So this is, remember, basically the minimum amount of work that you would need in order for this system to actually operate since this is a reversible cycle, we, can't, we wouldn't expect any irreversibilities to be occurring in this type of system. Okay, so that concludes our discussion of Chapter 7, which is the second law of thermodynamics. We will now move on and conclude our discussion on thermodynamics altogether, and we will start talking about fluid mechanics from our next lecture.